from Boston. We're here today getting ready to um, catch a Uber to the cruise terminal and head out on a cruise with Royal Caribbean. It's our first cruise since the COVID pandemic hit. A lot of things have changed in the cruising world and we look forward to sharing some of those things with you as we go on this adventure. Yeah, we're a little bit nervous about the weather of uh, flying in uh, into Boston this past week and then uh, prepping for this cruise. We, uh, we are in between Hurricane Lee and Tropical Storm Ophelia. So fingers crossed, <laughs> uh, say a prayer and we will uh, hopefully have a good adventure uh, for everyone to see. So we're gonna pack up now and head to the cruise port and we'll see you on the boat. Come sail away. Okay, so as you prepare to go on a cruise, you're going to sign into your account and download and print luggage tags. These are very important because you'll want to drop your bags with the porter when you get to the ship. And another good item that we found on Amazon are these luggage tag holders, and they come with the metal clips that you just fasten to the handle of your bag. You just put them on there before you hand your bags over to the porter at the cruise ship, and then you drop your um, cruise tags down in there for your luggage, and they come with the Ziplocs on the top, and you just seal them close. And then these will stay on your bags and help the porters know where to put your bags. All right, we have arrived here at the Flynn Cruise Port in Boston. This is our cruise terminal and there is our ride and our home away from home for the next eight days. This is the Serenade of the Seas. This is one of the Radiance class ships of the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. And we're going to leave here from Boston. We're heading up to Canada. We're going to go to Sydney, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia area. And then we'll come back through Maine and head to Portland and Bar Harbor, or Bahaba as they say out here. So one thing that was different on embarkation day here is in the past you would log into your account online, set up your cruise documentation, and then download and print it and bring it with you to the cruise terminal. Um, now you have an app, you can start the process online, but eventually to finish it up, you have to download the app. So Royal Caribbean has an app, we put it on our phone, and then we finish up our paperwork there and you'll get a set sail pass and the set sail pass is on your phone and you just show that as you go into the cruise terminal. Um, then they'll also give you your sea pass card which kind of becomes your room key and your credit card on board if you've linked your card up to your account. So we'll see how all that works as well. All right, we've made it through security and now we're heading down the gangway to get on the boat. There she is out the window. Excited to get on the boat. On the boat. Almost. A few more steps and we are on board. Welcome aboard the Serenade of the Seas. here to take a photo as you get on board. Go through the shops it looks like. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Thank you. So a little bit different boarding here. They're gonna send you to the left to go through the shop area, or to the right to go through the art gallery instead of uh, going into the main atrium. Over here is the Latte Tudes bar. Uh, this is an area where you can get coffees, lattes, a lot of fancy coffee, cappuccinos. This, there is an extra charge for these drinks. They're not included on the package. But we did splurge and get a coffee package. I think it was only $31. We pre-bought it and got a little discount online for pre-buying it. So we'll have some good coffee for the cruise. And that makes Matt happy. So this is a fun little feature here. They have a complete deck plan on every level here where you can see where you need to go. We're here on 7, which is our staterooms. It is about 12.45. The staterooms aren't ready for our access until 1. So we're gonna head up to the Windjammer, which is their buffet bar that's open, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can go up there and help yourself to some food. So we're gonna go grab some lunch, 
and check out the outside. <laughs> Here we are in deck 11. Let's go get some lunch. Looks like the windjammer's to the right. Stop here and get Matt's beverage package. So we made a stop at the beverage station on the way into the Windjammer and we had pre-purchased a soda package on board. It was about, I think, 70 something dollars for the week on an eight day cruise. We have one package for Matt and I got a coffee card. So we have this cup, they give you the free souvenir cup and then we'll use that throughout the week to get soda refills. Okay, we've arrived at our room. Now when you arrive on the ship for the first time, your keys will be waiting for you here on the door. All right, let's go check it out. Tight quarters getting all your bags in. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so as you can see when you arrive, there's not a whole lot of room here on either side. There's Matt. <laughs> Suck it in, coming through. You've got the bed. Now you can um, tell them ahead of time if you want your bed separated, if you're just traveling with a friend or put together. They come with two twin beds and they can put them together for you. Also under the beds are usually raised up. So there's plenty of room under there for you to store your luggage. Looks like they have some extra sheets and towels under this bed. And we chose to get a balcony room. Open up the curtains and check out our view here. Figure out how to unlock the door. There we go. Let's step outside. Ooh, yeah, a pretty nice balcony. We have a couple of chairs and a table out here to relax. Enjoy some coffees. Enjoy coffees, margaritas, you know. Anything. Got a beautiful view of the hot No Okay, let's go back in. Now one tip about the balcony and the door here. It's very tempting to leave this door open and hear the beautiful ocean sounds as you're on your cruise. However, please keep it closed because it can create a wind tunnel if you go out of the front of your cabin. You don't want that um, wind whipping through your room and it can slam the door shut. So just a little tip, they don't like you to leave the balcony door open. Here next to the beds, there's a light with a nightstand with a tiny drawer to put some things and has a little bit of space underneath there. This side of the bed also has a nightstand and a light, has your telephone. This room also has a curtain that you can draw and separate the bed area from the tiny living space. <laughs> There's one little kind of a oversized chair slash mini couch here and you also have a desk area we'll check out all the storage so there's a safe in the room so you can put all of your valuables and that's a good thing to do uh, the minute you can get into your room and put your stuff in the safe so you know that's stored away and no one can get to things I just found out that the mirrors on the side actually open and become storage so we've got storage on both sides of the mirror that's nice. Storage is precious on a cruise ship, so you definitely want to take advantage of all the little nooks and crannies to hold your things. They have a couple of shelves here. There's a mini fridge underneath. I'm going to see how to open that. There we go. Doesn't look like it comes stocked with anything, but you can put a few tiny little things in there. Definitely can keep some, some waters or anything you need for medicines or things cool for you. If you need a writing desk. <laughs> to write your letters. <laughs> Got three drawers. You have a small television. I have a drawer in the middle. Oh, well. All good cruise ships. Have art oh, the buy. art guide. That's right. What's kind of cool about this guide, at least, is they have a little bio on the artist, but also some samples of the work. It gives you a better idea of kind of what to expect if, if you found something that you might uh, prefer over another style. Got some more realism or something a little more further out there. That's kind of cool. Definitely somebody was influenced by Picasso. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll see what kind of closet space we have. Might have to hand the camera off to Matt for this one. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> Two of us can't, can't fit behind there. I was hoping it would <laughs> slide in. Oh, yeah. 
but you can see up above. You got your life vest stored yeah. in the closet there. It does come with a few hangers. Now, if you need more hangers, you can always ask your room attendant to get some more hangers. Definitely not something that you need to pack unless you just want to bring some from home. But they have plenty of storage space, really. You can store your suitcases under there, mm -hmm. unpack your things, and use the shelves. I mean, it's a decent-sized closet for you. Yeah, might be a little tight on the suitcases, oh but we'll... All right, now we'll see our tiny bathroom. Let's see. So traditionally, bathrooms on cruise ships are known for being pretty small. You can stand in the shower and turn around and literally hit the toilet if you need to. Um, it looks like this one has a rounded shower here on the left. You've got the toilet commode situation with some towels and hanging bars up above. And then on the right, You've got your mirrors and your sink. There's a couple of drinking glasses in here. And below there's some more storage space. There's a trash can and then here's a place where you can um, dump some liquids and use for different trashes and stuff that they can take out and clean. We'll step inside. Hey everyone. One side of the mirror also opens as a little storage area with some shelving so you can put stuff in there, keep it clean and nice in here. Star Trek fans, you're entering in the uh, Jeffrey's tube to travel between decks or perhaps a transporter room. <laughs> if only it were that easy. <laughs> so that's your shower. It does also come with a hanging, what do you call those things? Cord? Close, close clothesline? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Again, words are hard. <laughs> Comes with a clothesline that you can uh, hang up, like if you have wet swimsuits or things that you need to wash out and hang, um, you can hang them up there and let them dry. So this was a nice surprise. I unfortunately have sleep apnea and when I travel it's always a little bit challenging to figure out how I'm going to get water from my machine, especially when I'm traveling in the air and can't fly with it. Um, but our stateroom attendant came to check on us today and I was asking for um, an extension cord for the machine and he mentioned that they have distilled water that he could bring. So I said, sure, yeah, bring that. I thought it'd be maybe a bottle of water or something, but they brought a whole entire gallon of distilled water. Now it remains to be seen how much will be charged for this, if anything. Um, but I thought it was nice that they actually have the option um, that you can have them bring it right to your room and you don't have to think about that ahead of time. So that was great. Okay, another thing that we recommend purchasing is just the standard lanyard that has a pouch that you can put your set sale card in. I have my coffee card on there and you can wear this around your neck. So on your cruise, you won't have to carry around a wallet. Your set sale pass doubles as your um, credit card. It bills to your cabin. So that gets wrapped up at the end of the trip. So this is a very handy tool that you can just carry with you and put around your neck. So a couple of other items that we found useful that um, we kind of asked some friends what they usually will take and pack and some of the things that we heard were pop-up hampers. So I bought these off Amazon and they're really nice. They fold up and stay in your luggage and you can just put them here in the closet. So they sit there at the bottom and you can keep all of your dirty clothes in there until it's time to start packing to leave. So that helps contain the chaos as the cabins are pretty small so you definitely want to make the maximum use of your space if possible. One other item that I found on Amazon is this travel charger. Now this is specifically for cruising. Um, if you don't know it, if you've never cruised, any item that has a surge protector is prohibited, extension cords and different things alike. But this little guy allows you to charge, has three regular plugs, it has a couple of USB and one USB-C. And so it gives you some extra options for charging all of your gadgets at night. And this is cruise approved. So we picked this up on Amazon. It was about 20 bucks, I think. So not too bad of an investment and it'll help maximize our charging stations. Another item that we found on Amazon that I thought was very useful are these little magnetic hooks. All of the cruise walls are magnetic. So you can get some hooks and be able to help organize your things and take advantage of some of that vertical space as well. They're really nice for hanging your um, lanyard at night that has your sea pass on there so you can put it right there and you'll see it as you go throughout the door or hanging your coats and hats and anything else that you want to get up off of the floor. Another fun item that we've picked up are these junk headbands that you might see me wear from time to time in the videos. This is my pirate one. 
very excited to wear it for the first time. You picked that up just for the cruise, huh? <laughs> Matt loves his junk headbands. Mm -hmm. Also fun at, uh, at Disney World at the Magic Kingdom for the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. See? Well, there you go. Multitasking. Definitely got a match. And we got our green monster hanging up there that we picked up yesterday at the Fenway Park game. That was so much fun. Definitely check out our video on Fenway Park if you're into baseball or even if you're not into baseball. You can watch our shenanigans. <laughs> We love this little guy. He's so cute. So the alcohol package can be pretty pricey. Um, if you buy it ahead of time online, you can usually save about 30%. Um, but if you buy it and wait till you get aboard the ship, sometimes they'll have specials, but it can be upwards of $90 a day. Now, here's a little caveat with the alcohol package. Anyone in your cabin that's over 21 has to buy the alcohol package if one person buys it. So that definitely adds up fast. If you choose to purchase an alcohol package at $90 a day, this is an eight day cruise times two people. So we have brought our wine and then we will just purchase a drink here and there. Each guest can bring one bottle of wine on board. Now we chose to get um, wine that does not have to be opened with a wine corkscrew. So one thing to note, if you do bring a bottle of wine on board that needs to be uncorked and you don't have a corkscrew with you, they will charge a corkage fee that they will do downstairs in the dining room. I think it's about $15 to get it uncorked. So keep that in mind. Okay, so this is the main area of the ship, or the centrum as it's called. Every ship is a little bit different. Some have long promenades. This one was a smaller ship, so it just had an area that was kind of more open to the top of the ship, kind of went throughout the middle, and it had all the different level decks where you can look down into the centrum. So this is just an area where you'll find a lot of your activities on your cruise, and they'll be listed in the daily compass for you, so you'll know where to go to see what activities. Here we're entering through the schooner bar. This is an area that they have a lot of trivia and activities later on. And this is also where our muster station is located. So we're going to go check in and get that off our list. So one thing we noticed that's different is regarding the safety drill and the muster station. So prior to COVID, we had to line up outside. There was a certain time where you would go. Everybody has to check in. You get your safety procedures done so you know exactly what to do in the event of an unlikely emergency, hopefully unlikely. Um, and now everything is done online. So through the Royal Caribbean's app, they have a safety tutorial where they have uh, some videos that you watch for the life vest. You hear what the alarm is gonna sound like if there is an emergency. And then you have to go down to your muster station just to check in. So you no longer have to wait. Before it was probably a 20 minute process of getting down there, waiting for everybody to get in, check in, hear the alarm, and then you could be dismissed. So I'm kind of glad to see that that's a change that's happened. That makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now we're in their safari club area. Looks like they have some pool tables here, which I heard they do have a leveling feature in there. If you're playing while you're at sea and the boat is rocking, you can still play some pool. And this is the safari bar area. Not too many people back here right now. I'm sure this will fill up later as we go out throughout our cruise. I believe this is where they're going to have some of the movies. Oh yeah? They have a screen, looks like a dance floor, lots of seating areas. So these kind of spaces become lounges and activity areas throughout the cruise. It's your cruise itinerary. itinerary. Your cruise itinerary usually tells you where to go if you're interested in a certain activity. So they have up here. Oh, that's nice. Looks like chess. They have some chess tables set up. I don't know how to play chess. Do you know how to play chess? Yeah, I can teach you. Yeah, is it hard to learn? Um, it's hard to get good at. It's uh. not hard to learn. <laughs> not going to be a chess champion on board. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> Let's go here to the back. This looks like a great view of the back of the boat. Oh, yeah. Here you can see the cruise port. The ship behind us is a Norwegian ship. And as you can see, it's raining outside. 
Okay, here we are out on deck 11. This is the main pool deck. We're heading back to the spa to enter the raffle. Hope to win some additional spa services. Looks like they have some ping pong tables out here. Now normally this is where they have the big party going and music and they have the sail away party. But as you can see, today is overcast and rainy. So we'll see what they end up doing. They do have the pool going right now and the hot tubs, which I'm kind of surprised by. So if you want to know who has one of the worst jobs on the cruise ship right now, it's that poor little lifeguard that has to stand there while it's cold and rainy, just in case anyone is dumb enough to get in the water. Poor guy. We have a cinema screen out here where they'll show some movies out on deck. And they have a band set up over there. They're supposed to be playing a little bit later. Yeah, now we... We, uh... Did an amateur mistake. We packed our swimsuits in our luggage instead of bringing them in our carry-on. So we haven't gotten the luggage delivered to our room yet. So we can't get into the hot tubs, even though this would be perfect because there's literally nobody out here. So that is one thing to note. Things that you want on the, your first day, keep them in your carry-on bags because it can take a little bit for your main luggage to get delivered to your room. So definitely keep things like your wallets, cameras, passports, things like that with you. And then maybe a change of clothes or a swimsuit, a swimsuit cover, things like that if you want to get in the pool. Change of plans. Before we go to the spa, we're coming over here to get a margarita. Because no one's out here at this bar. And the inside ones are crowded. Time to sail away in style. Okay, we got our drinks. Ready to begin this party. Cheers. I went with the classic margarita. Matt has some kind of delicious rummy drink. R rum punch with a uh, nice topper of Kraken. Good way to start the day. That's right. On to the spa. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into the solarium area. Now this is an adult only area, guest 16 and above back here. So this is a nice kind of sanctuary area to get away from maybe some of the crowds and kids. Oh, it's immediately warm back here. I love it. It was very cold out on that pool deck. Let's go check it out. So this area is completely closed in, so this will be perfect for swimming. So they have a whirlpool here. Nice. They have another pool, although I'm guessing that water is still cold. Still the outside. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. We'll be back here for sure. Yeah. All right, and through the solarium, this is the spa and fitness area. So we do have a fitness center here on board as well, and the Vitality Spa. So I'm gonna shut this off, and we're gonna go turn in our forms and see if we can take a little tour. Well, it's time for the sail away party. There's not much partying happening today. The cold and rain has ruined the party. But we're still out here because we're dumb. <laughs> We've got our rain gear, so it's fine. That's right. And our flippy floppies. No, yeah. They're, yeah. They're shoes. Yeah, shoes. Yeah. Anyway, this is fun. This could be what happens to you on your cruise. But just bring around. <laughs> just bring around. I've only had one margarita and I still can't talk. <laughs> just bring along some rain gear and make the best of it. We don't have an umbrella, but we do have these cool jackets. This is probably gonna end up on the cutting room floor. B-roll. Is it B-roll if it's on the cutting room floor? C roll. That's the crap roll. That's C -ro, C -ro green. <laughs> what? What? Oh boy. Picking up. Okay, let's walk around. So this is the upper deck. Yeah. There's the port. We're still anchored down, so we're not quite ready to push off. I think we might have about 10 minutes. 
but they do have a nice running track up here. This goes around the upper edge of the pool. Oh look, a runner. Now don't run on, you're going the wrong way. Oh no. <laughs> no running when it's wet. First rule of safety. First rule of fight club. First rule of fight club. Here we are at the tippy top of the ship. This is the... Uh, That's Adventure Ocean down yeah. there where the kids play. Wow, they have a big old uh, slide. That's cool. A little pool area. Yeah. Currently looped off though. Hey, there's Wifey. This is kind of cool. Never been on a ship with one of these. A giant rock wall. I was going to say rock crawling wall, but that didn't sound right in my head. Sporty ball things for those who don't know sporty ball. Let's go see what's back, back here. There's a nice big lug out. Look at that guy's tan. Dude, put some sunscreen on. Oh, look, it's pet friendly too. the mini golf course. I can't believe no one's playing. It's the perfect day for it. Oh, the horn is blowing. Could it be time? Yep, we're moving. It's time to go sailing for adventure on the big blue wet thing. Come on, who knows the reference to that? Somebody's got to. I know my nieces will if they're watching this video. So, question for all you nautical folks. Is it schooner or schooner? Inquiring minds want to know. Comment below. I think it's the schooner bar. Matt's no been idea. saying schooner. Mm -hmm. It's possible I've said schooner a time or two, but I think it's schooner. Like and comment. <laughs> this video is now officially unhinged. <laughs> officially gone off the rails. We are off the rails. We're off the deck. We've gone off the port. We are uh, much further away than we were. Yeah. We need to be looking that way. Bye, Boston. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, Boston. <laughs> Had a nice day. We should be inside. We should go to the schooner, schooner, scooter bar, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> the nautical bar. Nautical themed bar. Nautical Here themed we come. Bar. But we have to see. The sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me, lads. Matt hates that song. Okay, so something that we're doing this time for the first time is called cruise ducks. So we heard about this thing where people take little rubber duckies and hide them around the cruise ship and then people find them. So it's kind of a game, they all have tags on them that says they can keep them, rehide them if they want, whatever they wanna do. So we're gonna start hiding some ducks and then we tagged ours um, with our YouTube channel, Adventures with Joyce and Matt, and our Instagram. So we'll see if people find them and can tag us and see how far these little duckies go. Okay, so on the stairwells of all the ships, they usually have artwork on the wall. Some are pretty cool to look at, and others are this. That's terrifying. Look at their faces. We entered into the haunted 
haunted portion of the ship. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, the poor kids. Is this the Demogorgon? Looks like it. Every cruise ship typically has a casino on board as well. Now, sometimes this is an area that guests are allowed to smoke in, so it can be a little smoky if you're a non-smoker. And they don't have the machines turned on until we're moving. But if you're into gambling, you can come in here and spend some time gambling. We also have a bar in the middle where you can get some drinks. And we're just going to cut through to the other side. We've got cards, we've got poker, blackjack. Maybe I'll teach you how to play uh, Texas Hold'em this trip. Texas Hold'em, that'd be fun. We have a couple of roulette tables in here. Don't know how much it is to play, but I enjoyed playing roulette in Vegas. Does it say? Oh, minimum bet's only a dollar. That's what it says now, anyway. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. You got video poker. All kinds of options to take your money. <laughs> okay, now we're going to the cinema, Crown and Castle Pub. Is this is cool. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It feels sports bar. Feels very castle like in here. Looks like there's a dartboard over there. Videos. Matt's been trying to find glimpses of the football game all day today. <laughs> I couldn't imagine uh, playing darts on a moving ship. Yeah. I don't think there's a, what do they call the gyro. pool table? Gyro. Gyro yeah. dartboard. <laughs> that keeps it level. They also have a cinema here on board. Not sure if it's open yet to get in and see what it's like. But we'll go see. There were a couple movies showing yeah. today. Oh, cool. The elevated seating with the big screen back there. Again, you can find the options for what's showing through the app on the activities page. Okay, and back here they have the Tropical Theater. This is where they'll have a lot of their shows and entertainment nightly on board. Let's see if they let us in. Looks like they're doing a talk in here about shore excursions. So that is the whirlwind tour of our beautiful ship, the Serenade of the Seas. Again, uh, lots that I've covered in the show today. So uh, I do hope that you take advantage of all the information that I've passed on. We are going to have this show on repeat. So if you came in and you missed the beginning, uh, do uh, tune in for that. Okay, we're now luxuriating on the balcony. We've acquired some drinks, hanging out, waiting for a few other activities to start. Mm -hmm. Still waiting on our luggage. Well, Matt got his luggage. I'm still waiting on mine. We got the important stuff. Yeah, so I just thought we'd get on here and share some of our initial thoughts. We haven't explored the whole ship yet, for sure, as there's still a lot more to see. Mm -hmm. But what are some of your initial thoughts for this one? Um, so obviously, Heads up for, for new travelers on boats or ships. We've yet to determine that. Um, first day is terrible elevator-wise. Uh, mm -hmm. Put your patient pants on, yep. you're gonna need it. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Uh, but on the positive side, the uh, Schooner bar looked good. And the Crown, what was it, Crown and... Oh yeah, Crown, the, there's crown English and pub. Castle? Uh, something like that, castle yeah. Castle and Crown? Um, look like a nice sports pub, uh, bub, sports pub. I swear I've not been drinking that long. We <laughs> just started, but it has been a long day. Um, yeah. I, I did appreciate the feel of that uh, pub. Uh, seemed kind of cozy, kind of cool. So I think we'll be checking that out. The uh, that pool in the solarium. Oh yeah, the adult solarium. We'll definitely hang out there. Yeah, that it's yeah. nice temperature control. It was really mm -hmm. warm in there. Actually, you could actually, on a day like the weather we're having right now, uh, you could actually hang out there and, and not freeze and 
still yeah, enjoy. Yeah, I mean, it was totally enclosed, and yeah. it's also like very warm in there. Yeah. So, so yeah, those are definite pluses. So I'm pretty happy yeah. about that. Uh, we've got our spa scheduled mm -hmm. uh, for a little bit later today, so we'll report back on it. Oh, I do have a thing to say about the spa. Mm, yep. So if, if you want to book spa services, like a massage, they do petties, manis, they do grooming, like you name it, they offer the service, acupuncture, they have all kinds of things. Definitely look online ahead of time. So we booked our couple's massage online and I think it said it was either 30 or 40% off of the rate. And we had a little bit of onboard credit because we booked this cruise through cruises.com instead of direct with Royal Caribbean. And so part of their offer with our package was that we had a $50 onboard credit. So we ended up paying a little under $200 for a couple's massage, and that's for both of us. Well, we went down there today and we kind of did a tour of the spa, and the rack rate for what we could book now, if we booked the same package right now, is $399. So we got over half off just by booking it ahead of time. So that's just a little tip. If you know you want to participate in something like that, don't wait until you get on board uh, to book it. Now they might offer you some special, you know, discounts for some things, or if you book two services, you can save a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. um, but the amount of money saved ahead of time was well worth it. Yeah. So definitely a little tip to do that. And the spa services in general on this ship uh, were, were pretty good too. Mm -hmm. So they had steam rooms, they had aromatherapy type rooms, um, a lot of different options yeah. on there. So check it out ahead of time, like, like Joyce said book ahead of time, you'll save quite a bit of cash and uh, be able to stretch that dollar a little bit more. Yeah. So my kind of overall feeling so far of this particular ship, this is the Serenade of the Seas. This is the Radiance class ship. So this isn't the lowest class, but it's the next one above. And I've sailed, I think this is our third Royal Caribbean cruise. We've done Carnival a couple times as well. Um, Norwegian's coming up next year in the fall, so we'll be able to compare how that one works too. Um, so this ship is an older one. I think this one is about 20, what did they say this was? 20 to 23 years um, that it's been in service. It has gone through some refurb. So like the decor is nice. I mean, it's what you expect of a classic yeah. cruise ship. Um, I was I saying it, it looked in good shape. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like it's seen the mileage on it. So I yeah. applaud them on keeping it up to date. Well maintained for sure. But also on the small side. So like the atrium level, it was very crowded and tight and hard to move around down there. Um, a lot of the activities happened there. They could even have the sail away party in there because it's pouring down rain here right now. Um, so also kind of keep that in mind that some of these older ships, they might not be as opulent or luxurious as some of the newer ones. Um, so they have a lot more tight spaces to get around. So that was the biggest thing I noticed, I think was just kind of, it felt more congested. Now it did have most of the floor plans. Um, they kind of have access from the aft to the forward yeah. of the ship. So we have been on some in the past as well, where if you wanted to go to like this theater, you had to go up and over and down and around. So that didn't have that feel. So it's, it's been pretty easy to like navigate and get around. Um, but like Matt mentioned, just the uh, elevators being extremely yeah. long wait times. And because it's a smaller ship, they don't have as many elevators. So definitely the first day you're going to encounter, and, and really for the whole cruise. I mean, the elevators, they do take some time because- We'll, we'll see. It, I, today for sure felt, you could feel it. You're gonna yeah. feel the pain today yeah. um, on it, but hopefully that uh, that's just day one and it won't be that way uh, the rest of the cruise. Yeah. Um, they did have some helpful interactive uh, displays, which I think uh, Joyce got some footage of, mm -hmm. uh, showing how a little bit easier to get to and from. So that, that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, the rooms themselves look decent. Um, Smaller. Uh, I would say this, um, we've had a balcony cabin a couple times and this one is definitely smaller. You know, there's different rates and different classes of rooms that you book. Uh, sometimes that can be a little bit overwhelming and hard to figure out, especially if you're a first time cruiser. Um, and this is only our, I, well, my fifth cruise, I think, and third, third for you. Yeah. So we're not professional cruisers by any means. Um, but we're not professional anything. We're not professional anything. Not even YouTube people, obviously, but it's fun. Um, so now I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Well, as I was saying. I'm, I'm here to disrupt things, apparently. Yeah. That, that's kind of my role. Yeah, that's his role. Um, but no, it's, it's good. I mean, it's still, you're still going to have a wonderful time on your vacation, no matter which um, cruise that you book and which cabin that you're in. And, you know, you could pay more money and get a fancier cabin, but you're really not in your room very much. 
because uh, there's so many activities to do out on the ship. So. Yeah, so as we uh, go to our ports the next few days, we'll do some filming there and share as much as possible. And we're very thankful to be here. And we're very thankful for you guys uh, following along on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up like and subscribe to our page ring follow that along bell. ring that notification bell <laughs> and we really appreciate it uh, leave us a comment below if you've cruised before what's your favorite part about cruising do you have a favorite um, cruise line like i said cruise de destination we're yeah. always up for some new ideas Love and suggestions uh, put a little comment below and uh, yeah. we will take it into consideration that's right love right. the travel <laughs> until next time we'll see you later bye bye